I never saw his face. Hey guys, it's me, Stana. Um, I'm here to talk to you about my new show called Absentia, playing on Amazon February 2nd. And I joined Facebook to do a little live chat. Um, so I'm just gonna get into it and attack some of these questions. Uh, so the first question is, at what point of reading the Absentia script did you say, I'm in? Uh, this is actually nice. This is kind of more of a, a, a normal question. Um, I got to read the first four episodes and then I had a meeting, a phone meeting with the director and with Sony. So uh, they kind of gave me an idea of what the general arc for the character would be uh, for season one and then also what potential arcs they're looking at for future seasons, if we have future seasons. Um, and I thought it was fun. It seemed like there was a lot of action and that was enticing. So next question. How important is it to tell the story of this woman who is a survivor, a fighter? Yeah, um, there's like a lot of behavior in the world that should have gone the way of the dodo bird, like somewhere around the time that the bubonic plague got kicked out, but uh, we're, we're still here and we're still behaving um, odd. And uh, so I think that the concept of a survivor is unfortunately uh, still commonplace in our world. So I think it's important for us to um, be able to speak to that sort of a story and keep it as a part of Isaac Geist. Um, you guys following me? Uh, and then aside from that, I feel like people are interested in thrillers and in those sort of genre films and, uh, and entertainment because we like, as humans, we like exploring and experiencing those things that freak us out a bit. And so I feel like Absentia kind of falls into telling a bit of both of those sorts of tales. Okay, next question. In one of the interviews, you said that Emily is not a character who will be liked. What about you? Do you like Emily Byrne? Yeah, for sure. Hello. Hmm. Okay, next. <laughs> As an actor, <laughs> where do you find inspiration? Um, this sounds so Pollyanna, but it's so true. I try to find inspiration everywhere, every day. And I feel like as an actor, if, if you're just alert to the world around you, there are little gifts everywhere um like a hummingbird you know passing by or just like a really kind moment with a stranger so i i enjoy that and then i also really i if i am kind of like oh i'm gonna go out there and and uh and really focus on getting inspired or shaking things up a bit i do i love traveling um and for me traveling is an opportunity to just kind of experience the world from an objective point of view and experience just how amazing humans can be, um, especially in some of these places that I've gotten to visit, like Mongolia and Peru and India and so forth. I've just had really lovely, lovely experiences there that have been extraordinary and really inspiring. Um, did you draw from your years of playing law enforcement for this role? <laughs> uh, yeah, I think I drew more from my years of high school uh, in my general like physical education class because there was a lot of running in this role. Uh, what was the most challenging part of shooting those water tank scenes? Did you have to do some training to hold your breath or wasn't it how it looked on screen? How did you shoot it? Okay, so the most challenging thing for that, those sequence of scenes, I think we shot those for like four days. And the most challenging thing was that <clears throat> You know, in normal filmmaking, you're sitting on a mark and your camera guy hey, can, um, <laughs> can find focus and uh, it's rather easy. Uh, but in our situation with the water tank scenes, I was um, 
in moving water within a tank. And to hit the mark was obviously uh, not super duper easy and the whole time I'm supposed to hold my breath. So uh, it was tough for the camera guys who were excellent, uh, but it was, it was a tough kind of sort of shot to get. And they wanna be able to bring the audience into the terror that the character is feeling at that point. So um, I think that that was really the gist of the challenge. It was just kind of capturing the shots that we needed in order to convey um, the psychological thriller element of that point of the story. Okay, next. Do you have a ritual, exercise, drink, or routine each day before shooting a scene to get you into character and mindset? Yes, I do. So what I do is I grab <clears throat> the call sheet and I take the call sheet and I peruse the call sheet and I kind of scroll down. And then when I find my name on the call sheet, I just kind of scroll over from there and then I find the call time that I'm supposed to be in the car at. And then I set my alarm clock for five minutes before that call time <laughs> so that I have time to brush my teeth and put some clothes on and jump in the car. And then after that, I start memorizing my lines. Okay, next one. Absentia is a psychological thriller. How did you keep that darkness from following you home each day? I sat at the um, I sat at the hotel room door and I stood there and I grabbed my staff and I said, You shall not pass. No. I'm kidding. I'm kind of kidding. I'm not really <laughs> um, when you say making thrillers is comedy, what was the funniest moment uh, you share with the other actors on the set? Okay, so the most kind of laugh, silly moments um, happened oftentimes in the hotel after work where we all kind of gathered oftentimes and we would have um, most of the time chicken soup because it was like in the middle of winter and people just wanted to, you know, feel warm and cozy. And um, we just had a lot of great, great kind of times and stories there. A lot of our actors were from all over the world. Um, we had a lot of British actors. Uh, we had a French actor. We had one of my uh, fellow actors was from America. We had a guy from Paraguay and, and uh, Israel. And so we had people from all over the world. And it was really neat to be able to work with these creatives and hear about their experiences um, filming in other parts of the planet. And I don't know, they were just a really good group. Everybody came, they gave 100%. And, uh, and I think we had a good time doing it as much as one can telling a thriller, you know? Uh, do you happen to have a favorite episode from this season? Okay, so favorite episode. I can't say I have a favorite episode. I think I have favorite moments in the episode, uh, throughout the episodes. So um, without giving anything away, uh, Angel Bonani plays Tommy, and he has a really spectacular moment at the end of this season. Uh, it's in the last episode. Uh, he just he just popped. He did a really lovely job. Um, Patrick Husinger, who plays Nick, and Cara Theobald, who plays um, Alice. There's a really sweet scene between the two of them where there's a screen kind of masking true feelings. But the audience, I feel like, is 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 going to enjoy that. I think it's a really lovely scene. Um, and then uh, Neil Jackson, who plays Jack, Emily Burns' brother. Uh, there is a scene where the camera is kind of driving in on his face and it's this beautiful monologue where his character is confessing to something and I'm not giving anything away. Um, those are some of the many scenes that I thought were like, oh, this is really cool. It's beautiful filmmaking and it was just great, great work by these actors. Uh, where, where would you like to film a new movie or show? Iceland. Either that or Ethiopia. Uh, if Kate Beckett met Emily Byrne, what would happen? Shalom, they would totally be friends. They'd be like, hey girl, what's up? And they'd be like, let's go for a coffee. And the other one would be like, okay. Are we doing live questions at all? Yes? Okay, yeah. cool. All right. Uh, yeah. Okay. Should I turn this around? Sure. Watch this. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, let's see. So Sandy Ling 
please forgive me if I didn't say it correctly, uh, said, what's your favorite part about being an executive producer? Thank you. Um, I think, look, I, I feel like it's really lovely to be um, not only on the acting side of it, but to be able to be a part of the dialogue that is uh, in the behind the scenes of creating the story's direction and and tone and feel. And it's not a solitary role. It's something that we do as a collaborative. And it was really nice to be welcomed to that role with Sony, from Sony. Um, and I think right now it's important for us as uh, as actors, as people, as women to take a seat at that table when the opportunity comes up. So I was really happy to have that uh, be the case. Okay, answer debt. Uh, so, uh, ha, okay, so uh, somebody uh, named World's Actress uh, wrote in, I know that you love to do your own stunts, but are there moments when they say, stop, we need to do this scene with a stunt woman? <laughs> yes, they do that. <sighs> it so irks me. Um, we were doing this thing where I was supposed to climb a building and this girl's like a major mountain climber. That was my uh, stunt double. She was fabulous and they wouldn't let me climb. So they made her climb it. It was annoying. Next. Um, what was the best? Okay, what was the best episode to film? Thank you, Kachar Amina. I, I did answer that. I, I appreciate the question though. So, okay, done, okay. Um, how is this role different from roles in the past? Uh, that's by Jamie Lane Osborne. Uh, so what I didn't necessarily want to play, um, uh, originally was I didn't want to play, th there's a system within which characters are playing like, uh, the girlfriend or the wife or, uh, the mom. And uh, I wasn't really looking forward to playing anything like that because oftentimes those characters are not driving the story. They're not an active member. They're just kind of the character that is worrying about the character who is actually driving the story forward. Um, and I wanted to be an active participant in the direction of the story as a, as a, as a storyteller. I feel like I'm repeating myself a lot, but that's okay. I hope you guys are following me. Anyway, uh, so when my agent was like, hey, so there's this character, la la la, and I was like, I don't know, guys, this isn't, you know, usually this doesn't mean anything that's terribly interesting other than this character is supposed to show the audience to be worried. Um, and then I read this story and I saw a woman who is not just a uh, former law enforcement, uh, but she's got this really amazing relationship uh, with her son. And it's something that drives her, almost like Liam Neeson's character was driven by his daughter's, uh, the relationship with his daughter and taken. And I thought, wow, that's, this is different. This is exciting. There are a lot of layers to play here. And then on top of it, I mean, she's just a badass. And so I thought that would be an exciting um, tale to tell as a, as an actor. So there you go. Should I keep going? Yeah. Sure. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Thanks. Um, uh, uh, uh. What did you do on your free time during the filming of the series? That's by Vanessa Morales. Hi, Vanessa. What's up? Um, what did I do? Okay. So I went and traveled through uh, the countryside. So we went to like a place called the Ethno Village, which is uh, they rebuilt this very, very old, many hundreds of years old uh, village. We also visited some castles. Um, I would hang out with friends. We'd go and check out some of their local hangouts. Um, they have like this kind of folk turbo dance mix bar place that you can go to uh, where people go in the evenings. And, um, and they have guys who have like drums and singers and dancers who come by your table and just make the party even party harder. Um, so we did a lot of that kind of stuff. It was rough. <laughs> uh, let's see what else. There's a couple more. Okay, done. Thank you. Um, so let's see. Uh, 
Jorge uh, Salinas said, what kind of background research did you have to do for this role and to decide on the color grading for this? Interesting question. The color grading was done by Nadav Hexelman, who was our um, director of photography. He was extraordinary. He's a really lovely filmmaker. Um, and that was, you know, he had a great kind of support team with all of the uh, the gaffers and and so forth. Uh, but he was he's a really talented guy. Uh, as far as background research for the role, I I didn't intend to be doing this sort of background research, but I ended up just having having read uh, some books on women who had uh, survived and been a part of the resistance for World War II. And um, that was informative. And then also I uh, was reading a book by um, Viktor Frankl called Man's Search for Meaning. And I thought that was very informative as well. Objects, effects, and left. Uh, I don't know. I think that's it, guys. Are there any other questions? There are? We're good? Yeah, yes? We're good. Oh, <laughs> dang. Okay. <laughs> so um, before I go, I have one announcement to make uh, for the territories that are playing Absentia um, and that are, uh, that are holding Amazon. We are going to be airing our first episode for free. So if you are in one of those territories, please take a look and uh, join us for the first episode of Absentia, February 2nd. Bye. <laughs> <laughs>